the big news of this week, man. Um, first off, we want to say, you know, RP uh YBC Duel, man. Um, this story kind of started with his uh untimely death. Uh after the uh the interview he did with the YouTuber, it went viral. You know, he died a few hours later. Well, um, since then there's been a lot going on, bro. Um so the dude YBC dude, um, he had a guy in Philly that they weren't necessarily enemies, but they weren't necessarily friends either. You know what I'm saying? Um, he went by the name of OT7 Kwani. Um, when YBC Duel did his big no jumper interview, you know, after he went viral for digging up the grave and all that wild stuff, the dude that wow. no jumper asked him about. You know what I'm saying? OT7 Kwani. Um, he kind of said, look, ain't no beef. Like, you know, he be he said he be with people that I don't like, but I don't got no beef with buddy. You know what I'm saying? Um, well, long story short, after the death of YBC dude, OT7 Kwani would make a a, a, a a social media post basically saying, Man, I was gonna ask you if you was going why you dissed me, but you checked out. Um, that angered a lot of people because he basically he dissing dude after he died. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then you got the whole No Limit, OTF Chucky, Chicago, all the people that rocked with YBC dude, man. They 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 went crazy on the dude. Did you did you see this story uh happening like when it was happening? Well, I didn't see the story happening while it was happening, but I did see that video of the Quanty, you know what I'm saying, put out. You know, in regards to him, man, I'm stepping on the ground right now. I'm outside, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, when something happens to somebody the day after they say they're outside, it shows y'all that I ain't afraid to be outside. So what you kind of saying, I kind of feel because I feel like, man, you kind of like, you kind of like this. You know what I'm saying? Like in my eyes, like, you know, I, you make that post and now you say you outside after what just happened to him. Now you kind of repping yourself as like ain't nothing gonna happen to me just because it happened to buddy type you know what i'm saying no nah, like, facts but the whole time you were saying previously like i ain't trying to diss but you get what i'm saying yeah it's like, like it's like he changed his mind after he died or something you know what i'm saying and he created energy now the in now you just created the energy right so the energy's been created from wherever you at to out here so now the fact that what you were saying previously was like, okay, but now since he's gone, you're saying this. Now you got people gonna probably be on your ass a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So, so, so OTF Chucky yesterday leaked the call. Um, I guess when people saw that social media post that OT7 Quanty made, um, uh, No Limit, Faro, uh, Big Op, a few other people, man. They really jumped on Kwani ass about it. I mean, clearly it's over the internet. You got Chicago niggas mad at Philly niggas, but they was on his ass. And it caused OT7 Kwani to reach out to, to OTF Chucky, who, you know, just recently signed uh, with Lil Dirk. So he reached out to, uh, to Chucky. Dirk. Right, right. He reached out to Chucky and he like, look, man, you know, he, it sounded like he was copping please on the phone call. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, OTF Chucky, he leaked the phone call. It's on the internet. He leaked the phone call, and okay. that's what caused Kwani to make the video. You see what I'm saying? Oh. Because they leaked the call, so they oh. leaking DMs, they leaking phone calls, they really trying to play Kwani like he a punk. Like, bro, you want peace? You calling us? You trying to cop, please? So then Kwani come out last night and say, man, hell nah, bro. We 10 toes down. And matter of fact, ten toes down. that's your man that got smoked the day after he did, he came outside. You see what I'm saying? Mm. So this is the next part. So, so Kwani has said that he's going to reach out to the same uh, YouTuber that did 
uh, YBC uh, dudes uh, vlog. He gonna reach out to that same guy. He gonna take that guy through the city. They gonna go through North Philly, South Philly. Um, they gonna go everywhere. He gonna hand out toys to the kids, and he's trying to show that there's a right way to you know stomp ten toes when you in the streets. And he's insinuating okay. that YBC dude wasn't doing it the right way. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, this gonna be this gonna be it's gonna be very interesting to see how this 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 folds unfolds basically. Um because you know, like like you said, I mean, what can you say about that? That, that is the right way. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna be handing out toys, you know, sliding through the hood, you know, giving back to the community and stuff like that in your city. I mean, I mean, who could who could, you know, negate that? You feel me? Um, but the fact that that he said what he said, and then now they got actual video, they got actual footage, video footage on top of that of you plead. Now you want to say you outside. You know, I don't know what was said. I don't know what was said is if like he can't come outside or something and he's trying to show that he outside on the clips or videos or DMs or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, was that was something said to insinuate that he can't come outside? And that's why he's showing he outside 10 toes down? Or? Um, so I, I'm not sure, bro. Like I said, these are Chicago niggas beefing with Philly niggas, man. Philly. So right. it's some niggas in Chicago that's mad. I'm sure they got niggas in Philly still, but yeah, I'm not sure, bro, to be honest. You know what I'm saying? I I, I think they was kind of driving on, bro, like saying he was hiding mm-hmm. and shit like that. So that's why he did it. But I, I get what you're saying. Like, if you beefing with niggas from Chicago, what is standing outside in Philadelphia mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, hey, like, I, think the, like... a, I think it's a good story, bro. You know, a lot of times... Uh, 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 people in the comments or just different people will be like, "Man, why y'all be talking about this? Why y'all be giving this shit energy?" You know what I'm saying? Us, us as most season season niggas, we not young boys, so it's like, why are we still we why are we still entertaining this shit? And I think this story is is like a prime example of why I entertain this shit because the young niggas entertain the fuck out this shit. They live by this shit. And it's always important that we stay in tune with what the young niggas is in tune with so that we can offer them an older insight. You see what I'm saying? If if I look at everything that the young niggas do is beneath me, how can I really connect with them? Facts. You see what I'm saying? So We got to all stay. Yeah, we trying to stay intertwined together. You know what I'm saying? I need to have my ear to the streets to be understanding what's going on in the streets. So just in case somebody in the streets needs to get some advice about the streets, I can give examples or I can, you know what I'm saying, let them know, hey, man, I heard about this and that, man, and this portrayed and this happened. When when dude did this, that that happened. So, you know what I'm saying? You're talking about the same kind of energy that you want to bestow upon somebody, but just beware that, you know, if you're doing this and doing that, this can happen, that can happen. So, you know, stay on your P's and Q's if that's the route you want to take. Honestly, that, you know what I'm saying? Like, giving those, those conversations, but it's good that, you know, we stay in tune with the streets because that's where we came from. You know what I'm Thanks. saying? But so in all actuality, people got to realize the reason why you stay in tune with the streets is because that's where I'm from. I'm, I came from doing what Shorties is doing now. Yes, I've changed. Yes, I've grown. But in all instances, I can still step back out there because I'm going to have to step back out in the streets. And I'd rather be aware of what's going on in the streets and being able to talk about what's going on in the streets instead of being ob- oblivious to it and acting like you was acting like you from the streets and you don't know about the street. You don't you know, know what saying? the fuck going on. Exactly. You know what the fuck going on. You over there on that, you over there on such and such and them people blocking, doing this and that and chopping it up and you don't know that they into it with such and such and such and such. And you wonder why niggas just came through facking up and nobody tell you. You see what I'm saying? Nobody's supposed to have to tell you. you Man, I'm supposed to be into I'm supposed to know what's going on. You're supposed to know. You, you, a, you a street nigga, you got to know what's going on. You feel yeah, absolutely, bro. So... So I'm glad we had that conversation because like that's why. So when people be like, man, why y'all be caring about these young nigga shit and y'all pushing negativity? Absolutely not, bro. We're actually reporting what's going on. We not instigating shit. I wish peace. I wish prosperity to all these young brothers. Hopefully by me talking about them, I could, you know, I know how the internet work. 
I, I'm giving clicks and views to their name. Hopefully, people go listen to their music, stream their music. But niggas is beefing right back, now. Back. You see what I'm saying? Niggas is beefing back. right now. Niggas is kind of jumping out their body after certain niggas check out. Other niggas is kind of woofing too, though, because I'll be honest, bro. I ain't like that OTF Chucky video. I didn't like that he leaked mm. that phone call. I feel that real gangsters can have them type of phone calls and have that type of understanding without doing that part. Keep that shit solid. Keep see, that shit that's, silent. That's what, that's what you were just talking about, the, the OG status when it comes to, you know, that conversation. Maybe somebody could read, maybe somebody... Maybe one of his OGs might reach out to him like, "Hey, man, you know, doing that one, you know what I'm saying? That one, that one gangster, you know, yeah, what, we what, what Birdman phone calls, said, man. What, what, what Birdman said, I don't feel like that was gangster. You know what, <laughs> what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It was, no, facts yeah, though, I, but yeah. I, I, I see what he going with. I see what Chucky going with it. Like I said, man, shout bro out. But I really didn't like. We not doing that. We real gangsters, bro. We not leaking phone calls. That's some shit bitches do. Just to be real. But see, you know the thing about it is, so if you. So a lot, a lot, a lot, and a lot of times people don't, you know, looking at it from both perspectives, you know, sometimes some things, in some people mind, hey, this needs to be shown to the public in regards to who who he's saying that he is, and trying to get people to believe he is. And sometimes I may need to show this, maybe, and this is my only chance to show who he really is. You know what I'm saying? Because you're portraying this, and you're not that. So you know, like like I always tell people, both perspectives and both sides. You know, you really have to look at it from both sides because initially, sometimes some some people might have a belief in a man or just might be thinking like, "Hey, I need to do this to show people like I'm not just trolling him. Mm-hmm. This is what he's doing and saying and acting like, and this is why I'm saying and doing what I'm doing." You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So, you, so, so you saying he was setting the record straight? Yeah, because I could say I could say Rex is this and Rex is that, but I don't got no proof. I could just be talking all my, you know what I'm saying? Just trying right. to make your name look bad. But, you know, so I get where they're coming from. But as they get older, and a lot of times people going to develop that conscious and that, you know what I'm saying? The, the the smarts and wits to be like, you know, I don't even need to say it. I don't even, because, you know, that's what police do. You know what I'm saying? Record, they record, they record. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I feel so like if a nigga, I feel like if a nigga not solid. <laughs> what you record my whole conversation for? That's you know yeah, you recording the convo, but you saying I'm not solid. That's kind of weird to me. Also, if a nigga not solid, bro, bro, time will tell. Other niggas will see it, bitches will see it, business will go bad. A uh, unsolid nigga can't last, bro. He might be hot now. But see, and a, th- a thing a lot of about a lot of this stuff is, bro, like when you say like the mentality of what they have currently right now in the hood growing up. Is that if I try to squash something, or if I try to handle something as a man, or chop it up with somebody, then I'm a bitch. You know what I'm saying? Or 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 I'm looked at as 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 a lame. Or you know what I'm saying? Like the manhood part. Sometimes the manhood part takes time to develop, so they can so they can sit down and handle and handle a situation and chop it up and say, you feel me? But nice. in the street the street mentality, they like. Nigga, I don't like this nigga, and woo, woo I kill that nigga, and woo, woo, you know, they, they mentality like that, and it, it's understandable, because this is what they grew up of, so, you know, who am I to say that, you know, you have the wrong mentality, you know what I'm saying, this is what you've been bred, you feel me, this is what you're about, this is the life that you chose, so I get it, you know what I'm saying, but once, once they start to realize and grow up, and that's why I really don't, like, try to, you know, kind of, talk down or something on the, you know, the young street guys and, you know, what they're going through is because, you know, people don't, y'all, ain't no, y'all, y'all people on the internet, people ain't out here going through what they're doing. Nobody know what's really going on in their life. Nobody know what they really in the streets or not. Nobody knowing why they got to do what they got to do when they got to do it, how they got to do it. You feel me? Thanks. I don't know if moms or pops up in that motherfucker. These, you know, niggas probably really told them. Niggas, niggas probably really told them. Niggas probably really got to walk with the blick to the store. Like, this shit, shit really real out here in the streets. So, a lot of times people sit back and they and they view that shit and think that it's like, oh, them niggas, man. It's real out here in the street. It's real in Chicago, bro. It's real. 